as predicted, the price of intelligence is going to zero. GPT-40 mini just came out and is the most cost effective model while maintaining a majority of the performance of a state of the art model. I think the numbers here are actually really, really staggering. The GPT-40 mini is insanely close to the performance of GPT-40 in many of these cases and many of these benchmarks. With a trick we've been looking at on the channel, you can maintain the exact performance gains that you can get from GPT-40 and even Claude 3.5 Sonnet. That's what we're gonna look at in this video, but we really do have to express how crazy this is. GPT-40 mini really is insanely affordable intelligence. 30 times cheaper than GPT-40. This is roughly averaging their input and output token costs. And then it's roughly 20 times cheaper than 3.5 Sonnet. And again, the crazy thing here is the performance gains don't drop off a cliff. Gemini Flash is the only model that's come as close, but with every one of these other models, once you go down in size, once you make your model cheap, you lose all of the state-of-the-art performances. This is why GPT-40 Mini is so incredible. You'll notice here, you know, 82 to 88. That's a 5% accuracy difference, 13%. We have a 3% difference here, 6% difference, 3% difference. This is really, really crazy considering the costs, right? We're talking about percentages often smaller than 10%, right? The accuracy is at the worst a 13% drop off. And again, with this trick I wanna show you in this video, you can maintain a lot of the benefits of using one of these models. We're gonna talk about that in just a second here, but it's really, really wild that by only a drop of 10%, you have a gain of 30,000%, 30X and a 20X. So, you know, if you're using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is already priced at $3 per million tokens, it's only gonna be a 20X, but still uh, only is a silly word to use there because a 30 times improvement in price and a 20 times improvement in price are both absolutely incredible. So, you know, GPT-40 Mini confirms what we've been kind of betting on on the channel. The price of intelligence is going to zero. So what does that mean for us? How can we utilize this? How can we play with both the absolute state-of-the-art models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet and also how can we take advantage of the cheaper second tier but still high performing model like GPT-40 Mini. Everything starts out with the prompt, but you can take the prompt and chain together the results. And by chaining your prompts together, you can accelerate the results by having your models think step by step, blow up their context window, solve problems one step at a time. You've seen this, we've discussed this on the channel. We pushed this a step further in our previous video. You can do this with multiple chains running across different models. So you can have the state-of-the-art results running. You take your inputs, and instead of just running a single prompt chain to get that accelerated result, you run two, three, four, five, or more prompt chains. And then what you do at the end is you merge the results with an evaluator function. This evaluator function is very important because it forces you to say, this is what it means to get a good result out of my LLMs, out of my prompts, and out of my prompt chains. So in the end, it looks like this, right? Prompt one feeds into prompt two, two to three, and this can go all the way up to N, as many prompts as you need to chain together you can, but then you take your results and you merge them together with the evaluator. This is called the fusion chain. Link's gonna be in the description. We talked about this a lot in the previous video. This allows you to get the state-of-the-art results out of the best performing models, of course, at the price of running all of these models on your same prompts and on your same prompt chains. In the end, this is going to be more expensive. But the incredible thing here is, thanks to GPT-40 Mini, now that we have a high-performing model that is extremely cheap, what we can actually do here is take our fusion chain and just run a GPT-40 Mini fusion chain. The price of this chain effectively has dropped to zero while we maintain most of our results because we're using prompt chains and we're using the fusion chain here, right? So we're gonna get three takes of a step-by-step, task-by-task prompt. We're going to then evaluate the results using a clean evaluator function, and then we're going to finally get that last output. So, you know, running nine prompts of these, you know, higher-end models can now be done at a fraction of the cost. Every single one of these prompts is gonna cost us 20 to 30 times less. So that means we can really, really exploit this idea of 
using cheap high performing models with prompt chains and fusion chains. So this is a big idea that I've been playing with a lot and I've been getting some really, really high class results. So what does this look like in action? Let's go ahead and look at an application we've been building on the channel. This is called Zero Noise. It's an application that allows me to fetch information from blogs, from change logs, from tools, from websites, only when there are relevant changes, when there's new content. This allows me to aggregate information faster and only consume information when it's time to consume information. I think one of the most important things you can do in the age of AI is make sure that your information diet is as clean as possible. There's gonna be so much content generated. There already is so much content. You feel this on a daily basis. You know what this is like. I think it's important to build and use tools that help you filter out the noise, keep yourself in a low noise focused environment. In previous videos, we built up the fetch workflow where we go scrape all these blogs for relevant content for new relevant content. We built up the learn workflow. And in this video, I wanna show off the run recommendations, the recommendation workflow. So we have a recommendations prompt chain with multiple versions of GPT-40 mini running in every single prompt chain. And all it's gonna do here is, based on the content we have already set up in our fetch, to, you know, you can see in here, we have the cursor change log, we have the Ader blog, we have Simon W's blog, shout out Simon W. And then we have a couple additional ones here. What this will do is take related keywords and go ahead and perform a SEO type search. I'm using Exa AI. You can use really whatever you want. Scrape some related results based on some related keywords. So thanks to GPT-40 Mini, this agentic workflow is nearly free when before it was, you know, 20, 30 times more expensive. So you can see here, I'm getting some great and some not so great results, but that's kind of the whole point of this, right? I have a nice variety of recommendations that I can now look through that my agentic workflow has surfaced for me automatically based on these related tags. Now we're gonna hit thumbs up and thumbs down and it's gonna save a brand new recommendations feedback data type, which will then change the flow of the application in the future based on the thumbs up or the thumbs down that I give it. So this is really cool, this is what it looks like. Let me go ahead and just show you what the code looks like just a little bit. I wanna focus on the prompt chain and show you how cool this is that we can take GPT-40 Mini, a cost-effective, high accuracy model and generate some still very state-of-the-art prompts and prompt chains. So we have this workflow. I like to use this agentic pattern here where we retrieve, we're in our agentics, we act, learn, and notify. And all the magic is happening right here in the recommend workflow. So let's go ahead and walk through this a little bit. So in our agentics, we're taking all the scraped content from every one of our you know, currently existing uh, information sources that we're interested in. We're creating content in markdown format. We're then gathering our previous positive feedback items and our negative feedback items that's created by hitting the thumbs up and the thumbs down here from previous runs. And then we're just, you know, creating some context for these prompts. Then we're actually running our prompts and you can see here we have an evaluator and here is the important part. So we're using this fusion chain, which allows us to run a series of prompts over a series of models. There's something kind of interesting happening. I am just running a prompt chain with four GPTO mini models. So I'm running the fusion chain over these two prompts. Let me just show you these two prompts real quick. So based on all of the scraped content, we're going to extract keywords. And then based on our positive and negative feedback, we're going to filter out those keywords that are not relevant and make sure that we maintain and explore the keywords that are relevant to the positive feedback, right? So the thumbs up. And that means that, you know, we have two prompts here. Instead of three prompts, we have two prompts and we have one more chain and they're running into the evaluator method. And the evaluator, all that's doing here is, we can just go ahead and minimize a lot of this. The evaluator is basically just taking all of the last results, just taking the results from the last layer of prompts, right? So this last layer here, and it's merging them all into the evaluator function. And all we're doing here is we're gonna get all the keywords and all the items that we do actually wanna search for. And then it's going to return that response and then a score for each one of our final outputs. The evaluator is really, really powerful. It forces you to define what it means to get a great result out of your prompt chain and out of your LLMs. Basically what we do is given the final layer of every single prompt chain, you merge them together using whatever logic you like. But the interesting part here is that this fusion chain is powered by four GPT-40 minis. And it's giving us this like great set of results 
based on the script content from the existing URLs, right? So what does this look like in detail? Let's go ahead and look at some of the log files. We have the fusion results here. The top response here is that fuse response from our evaluators. So you can see we have a list of URLs here, which we pulled and we have an entire explanation for every single keyword. And then here you can see all the keywords we have, right? So these keywords then create additional SEO searches. And then the SEO searches are surfaced here. And then I can just click in and see what I'm interested in, right? So we have some, uh, we have a fireworks uh, cursor blog here and looks like there's a collab happening here. And yeah, this just happened recently. So very interesting. I actually did not know that uh, cursor was working with fireworks and they achieved this really, really crazy 1K tokens per second. Um, so, you know, this is really cool. So if I was interested in this type of content, this type of information, and I wanted to see more on cursor prediction, I would just come in here, thumbs up. And now what's happening is based on my thumbs up here, this is going to save in my configuration.json file. And on subsequent recommendations, it's going to see that I thumbs this up and specifically look for more content like this, right? So we can see exactly what that looks like in the configuration. If we close our providers, you can see here, we have some recommendation feedback and I'll just collapse all of this. So we can just see that most recent one that I just added, but you can see that that's here, right? So we have the URL coming in, we have the keywords and then we have positive feedback, negative feedback. So this is a positive one, right? Since I gave this a thumbs up and now this cursor prediction SEO keyword is going to be prioritized in subsequent searches. So if I was now interested in fireworks content, their blogs, I could come in here, take a good look at their, uh, you know, content. And then I could, you know, run the previous workflow, which we covered in another video, a different agentic workflow will run and start to put together the information that we need to know if there are updates on this blog that I haven't seen before with every agentic workflow, they start to feed back into each other, right? So here's a quick diagram that kind of shows that off. So in the beginning, we have our config.json and you know, that's this file. It contains our recommendations and it has our, you know, providers here. So you can see we have the cursor change log there and, and we have the HTML elements that are used to, you know, find new content. We load that, we scrape those websites. We run our GPT-4 mini fusion chain that gives us our keywords. We then run our keyword search, generate the recommendations as you saw, and then we displayed them. So, you know, that was, you know, this UI here. And then when I hit thumbs up or thumbs down, this is where we get into this really interesting feedback loop where this actually updated the config.json, right? With some new recommendations, which then fuels and populates the subsequent workflows, right? And you can see that in one of the prompts here, we're actually pulling in, you know, all of our positive feedback and our negative feedback from our config. And then this is passed in as context into the prompt chain, right? So this gets passed in down here into the fusion chain and we're running the uh, parallel run here, which will run all of these prompt chains at the exact same time. And we can dig into the prompts a little bit. So the first prompt is keyword extraction in the markdown format, giving it some rules to follow, placing the scrape content and asking for the output format, ending with a you know leading sequence to lead the model into the right results. We're using the five key elements of the prompt here. That's our keyword extraction prompt. And then our prioritization and filtering prompt is doing the work of, you know, listing the positive items, listing the negative items. And then we're just asking, you know, based on the previous prompt, which will be the, you know, JSON result of the keywords that were extracted from the scraped content. We're saying, you know, filter out, we're saying keep, and then for anything new, just leave it in there. There are unexplored keywords. We just want all those to surface, right? This is a simple prompt. This could be a lot more complex. You might be thinking you can just, you know, match on keywords and just, you know, pull them out. Yes and no. Really, there are many keywords that your prompts could extract that will be similar. And the whole idea is to give more of these capabilities to your LLMs, to your prompts, to your AI agents. Let them do the work. You just ask exactly what you want to happen. And it's gonna be a point where you're going to want to feel this workflow by a prompt instead of with code, right? The whole idea is to be practicing, building out these agentic workflows so that we are coding less and prompting more. So that's that workflow. We pass in the positive, negative, and then we ask for that same output. Over time, this will get more sophisticated and our prioritization and filtering logic will improve. But then this is really cool. You know, instead of passing in, you know, four of the big top tier models, I'm just passing in four GPT-40 mini models and getting, you know, basically the exact same results 
as running the big three models, right? So instead of running 4.0, Gemini 1.5, we're just running O mini and saving a ton and ton of money. We're then saving this. We can go ahead and just finish looking at the fusion result here. So you can see all the keywords from the top result. This is the part of the prompt chain because LLMs, these models, they're not deterministic, right? So every single GPT-40 mini call is going to be different. Every one of these arrays here represents a GPT-40 mini prompt chain, right? So we have two prompts here where it returned the keywords that we're looking for, right? In the first run of GPT-40 mini, we got this result here, right? For that first prompt. And, you know, so we extracted some good keywords. We have AI API comparison, you know, code linting generative AI. We have it explain every SEO keyword and how it relates to the content from the URL so that the LLM is, you know, thinking a little bit more about the decisions it's making. And then it runs the second prompt, right? So this is the filtering prompt. It looks like nothing got changed between these two runs. So, you know, that meant that our feedback loop didn't include or exclude any one of these keywords, right? So that's the first prompt chain. And then we have another prompt chain here, right? And we got completely different keywords, right? Cursor editing, ADR, LLM models, OpenAI. And if we just go ahead and collapse this, you can see that we did filter out OpenAI because I had the OpenAI in the negative keyword. If we go ahead and hop over to JSON, you can see I had OpenAI here in the negative feedback on a previous run. I don't really need to know anything about the OpenAI API. So I gave this a thumbs down and you know, this prompt chain of GPT-40 mini actually just filtered that out, right? And this is really nice because if I was writing code, I wouldn't have been able to filter on this exact keyword, right? But since I'm using LLMs and they have good reasoning ability, it's all open AI and it just filtered it out for me, right? That's really awesome. So you can see, you know, also this prompt chain working, you know, here's the first set of keywords in the first prompt. And then after the filtering with my recommendations, you know, got rid of some items, which is exactly what I wanted. So this is just a way that you can utilize both prompt chains and GPT-40 mini to get some really, really incredible results. I've run this workflow and I've run, you know, the big three plus the mini. And I can tell you that throwing four mini models into this fusion chain is effectively doing the exact same job as the state of the art models. And, you know, this is all a big shout out to, you know, coming full circle here, all the work that OpenAI is doing, really leading the pact here with the release of GPT-40 Mini. You know, keep your eyes on prompt chains. I know that you're likely working with AI agents and LLM libraries, but prompt chains and chaining in general is a really, really powerful way to kind of bridge the gap between second tier and top tier model results. I do think in the future, we're gonna see this trend where Anthropic, Google and OpenAI are going to keep pushing out like very, very top end models and really charging for it. It's going to get cheaper, of course, but they're going to charge for the best model. And then they're always going to have some type of secondary model, right? We saw that with Gemini Flash and Gemini Pro, and we're seeing it now with GPT-40 Mini. OpenAI was really the first to kind of kick that off with uh, GPT-3.5 and then GPT-4. And then everyone followed. We have, you know, Claude Haiku, Sonnet, and Opus. So I think this is gonna be a trend that we continue to see. And I just wanna give you a technique to kind of bypass all the noise, right? You can using the second tier models like GPT-4 or Mini and a great fusion chain or even just a prompt chain, you can really, really get the top state-of-the-art model results when you're using the right prompt chaining techniques. Let me know if you like this idea. Let me know if that makes sense. Let me know if you're experimenting with prompt chains in the comments below. We are on a journey to building intelligence that works on our behalf. We're building software that is living, that works while we sleep. If that interests you, hit the like, hit the sub, and I will see you in the next one.